Ladies and gentlemen, digital investors, welcome back to another video. We have a good amount of things to go over today. First off, we have record 15 billion worth of cryptos under management after institutional investors pump 429 million in one week. Fidelity unlocks Bitcoin as collateral for borrowing on BlockFi. Ray Dalio switches his position on Bitcoin and becomes a bull, says it could be a good alternative to gold. Crazy, I know. We have so many people coming out in support of Bitcoin. Point lately um, Apple co-founder uh, Steve Wozniak crypto doubles in price overnight so his cryptocurrency is now out and V chain becomes a founding member of the blockchain for trade and connectivity network this is pretty cool uh, BTC here is not meaning Bitcoin it is meaning the blockchain trade and connectivity network this is this is huge guys so definitely stick around for this we also have a couple of other things that we'll be looking at but we're just going to start here with this 15 billion dollars worth of cryptos under management after institutional investors pump 429 million in one week what they're talking about here is grayscale grayscale increasing their assets under management so we're going to get started if you guys are frequent viewers of the show and you'd like to show some support then tap the like button make it turn blue and that helps immensely with this video getting pushed out to more and more people all right a new report says institutional investors pumped 429 million dollars into cryptos and cryptocurrency funds in the week ending december 7th the figure which is the second highest on record pushes to the total value of digital assets under management to an all-time peak of 15 billion the largest weekly inflow on record is 468 million seen in november breaking down the latest inflows the flow of money into digital asset funds shows that grayscale accumulates accumulated 336 million or roughly 78 percent of the 429 million following its latest acquisitions grayscale has now accumulated 4.3 billion in digital assets in 2020 so far and the fund currently leads the pack with 12.4 billion assets under management so out of this 468 million grayscale alone is eating up 78 percent of that sorry out of the 429 million james butterfield the investment strategist at coinshare says on an anecdotal level based on our client conversations over the course of 2020 we have seen a decisive shift from inquiries of a speculative of nature to those that begin with comments such as bitcoin is here to stay please help us understand it so that's pretty interesting guys right it's it's not just speculation it's not just a gambling bet but these institutions they they are saying here here's his quote bitcoin is here to stay please help us understand it and they're ready to pour money into the space butterfield believes institutional interest in adoption of digital assets is ongoing instead of cooling down it really seems as though this pandemic and the, our government's response to how they dealt with it in terms of the money printing has really made people realize that hey you know maybe the u.s dollar isn't the best spot for us to put all of our wealth in right especially when our buying power is being pushed into the toilet now we also have ray dalio ray dalio softens uh, his position on bitcoin and says it's a gold alternative hedge fund manager and founder of bridgewater associates ray dalio seems to have softened his position on bitcoin he went from dismissing btc as a currency and a store of value through a what am i missing stage and most recently admitted that the cryptocurrency could be an alternative to gold so obviously he was missing something and now he has found it the prominent investor has never displayed favoritism regarding bitcoin just the opposite he has questioned bitcoin's role as a store of value or as a currency mainly relying on the notorious volatility at davos earlier this year dalio even said that the cryptocurrency fails the purposes of money as the primary cryptocurrency started surging in value in the past months he admitted to his twitter followers that he might be quote missing something about bitcoin max kaiser classified this moment as a turning point and that we have seen the education of a bitcoiner so basically saying that we got to witness in real time the education of a bitcoiner the transition from you know <laughs> ray dalio saying what am i missing about bitcoin to admitting oh wow i was missing something about bitcoin and again i think that the pandemic definitely has opened people's eyes to it their eyes were probably opened before but as we know you know guys like this they they say things when they want to say them right they're they're when they get on tv they get on some publication they know what they're doing right they're trying to push whatever agenda it is that they're trying to push or trying to just you know make more money that's that's what this game is really about right 
We see so many people say one thing, like bashing Bitcoin, but they're buying Bitcoin on the low, right? So that they could get a cheaper price for it. And we've seen that time and time again. So Ray Dalio says, I think that Bitcoin and some other digital currencies have over the last 10 years established themselves as interesting gold-like asset alternatives with similarities and differences to gold and other limited supply. Mobile, unlike real estate, stores storeholds of wealth. So it could serve as a diversifier to gold and other such storeholds of wealth assets. He outlined his strong preference for holding things which central banks are going to hold and exchange in value when they are trying to transact. Nevertheless, he advised people who might want to allocate funds in Bitcoin or other limited supply and mobile assets, including stocks, to diverse, diversify wisely as not a lot of people do that. All these guys are coming out in support of Bitcoin, right? And that's all we're hearing is Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And we can see that that's the main reason. What is getting them into cryptocurrency? Bitcoin is getting them into, currency, into cryptocurrency. And what is getting them into Bitcoin, in my opinion, it's the realization that the dollar is failing. It is losing buying power. It doesn't buy as much as it once did. I mean, we could look at this right here. This is from at Gold Telegraph on Twitter, and they made a, a perfect example. It says the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar, 1913 to 2020. As you can see, your dollar used to be worth a dollar in 1913, but then the Federal Reserve is created, and look what has happened since 1913 all the way to 2020. We we are basically worth. Uh, right here saying we're worth three cents. So in 1913, your $1, if you saved it all the way till now, it's now worth three cents. And that is why in the current state of our economy, savers of cash are the real losers, right? Cash is not king. Uh, cash has never been king. Since 1913, cash has done nothing but lose value. So with that said, they, they now understand Bitcoin. They understand why they need to be in Bitcoin because Bitcoin has the fixed supply, right? There's only 21 million ever. The having basically uh, forces supply and demand. So the price increases. It's a deflationary asset by default. So they understand it. They realize it. Now, what happens when they really realize Ethereum, when they really realize XRP, when they understand something like VeChain, what happens then? Okay, that is what this wealth transfer that you guys hear is really about. Okay, these guys are starting to catch on to Bitcoin. They're starting to realize it. At least they're saying it, right? Now, whether or not they're lying and they've been in on it in, for years, I mean, that, that's all speculation. I'm not going to say I believe it or don't believe it. I, you know, I, like I said before, I think these guys say what they're going to say at, at, at certain times, right? They know they they know what they're doing, right? So I'm sure they already have a good understanding about Ethereum and some of these other cryptocurrencies, but they're not going to come out and talk about it yet, right? But all of that stuff is in the pipeline. It's coming in the future because we know we're going digital. Uh, you know, <laughs> like think about this, guys. What happens when these dudes learn and, and understand DeFi, understand smart contracts, okay? Their minds are going to be blown. This is why you guys are going to be so heavily rewarded because of how early you are in this space you are coming in is innovators literally coming in as the innovators maybe not so much for bitcoin right bitcoin's been around here for 10 years but these other cryptocurrencies looking at things like defined smart contracts i mean these are new technologies that are just coming out and truly the people who are invested in them now will be considered the innovators in my personal opinion we also had julia chatterley from cnn and she interviewed mike novogratz and some of the things that Mike Novogratz said, this was interesting. She posted this on her Twitter at J Chatterley CNN. Novogratz said, you're going to see every single financial institution forced into this space. Invest 5% of your net worth in Bitcoin. We're at the beginning innings of rebuilding the infrastructure that American and global business will be done on in the future. And I would agree, guys, I would say that we are definitely at the beginning innings. We do not even have regulatory clarity yet. Once that regulatory clarity comes, people have a clear framework that they can work upon. It, it's going to be a race, right? It's going to be another race. Company versus company, high competition. Um, that is the things that I foresee not to play out overnight, but to play out over the next coming decades. Because again, this is the infrastructure. This is Mike Novogratz's words. It's the beginning innings of rebuilding the infrastructure that American and global businesses will be done on. So this is very, very huge stuff. We also have Fidelity and Locks Bitcoin as collateral for borrowing on BlockFi. Depositors using Fidelity Digital Assets Custody will be able to access liquidity via BlockFi. The firm Fidelity partnered with crypto lender BlockFi to disperse the loans. Institutional clients of Fidelity's custodial solution will be able to draw cash loans from their stored Bitcoin without having to move it, provided they have an account with BlockFi. So pretty much guys, in simple terms, you hold Bitcoin, rather than selling that Bitcoin for cash, 
you can basically use that Bitcoin as a collateral loan to draw cash again. So you could leave your Bitcoin in there and without having to sell it, you could get cash, if that makes sense. The target customers of this feature are primarily hedge funds, miners, and over-the-counter trading desks. A Fidelity spokesperson said that the offering comes as part of a demand for increased capital efficiency among its customers. Our full-service offering that includes custody and trading will continue to help institutions enable capital efficiency while prioritizing asset safety and stillness. The loan to value ratio will be set at 60, meaning that each $1,000 in collateral can back at most $600 in borrowed money. Nonetheless, that parameter could change according to the specific customer's needs. Very, very cool, guys. Fidelity has been doubling down on cryptos. We've been getting a lot of news about Fidelity, especially recently, and it's clear to see that they want to adapt. They want to embrace the changing system, which is probably going to pay off greatly for them, right? Fidelity will probably be one of the institutions that doesn't go bankrupt because they are actually adapting to the changing climates. If you guys are enjoying the video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. You'll be notified every single day when I post a video and you don't have to search me up. You'll just get uh, my videos put right in your timeline. YouTube will give you a notification if you do hit the bell. Keep in mind, nothing we cover here is financial advice. I'm just covering the daily crypto news in this bull run. If you guys could also do me a favor and hit the like button, I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Our prices for today, we have Bitcoin at 18,492, Ethereum at 571, XRP at 57 cents. And for some coins that are up pretty high on the 24 hour that we're familiar with, we have Decred up 36%, Nexo up 19, Stellar up 15, Elrond up 11, and Reserve Rights also up 11% on the 24 hour. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Apple co founder Wozniak's crypto doubles in price overnight. Apple co founder Steve Wozniak's new cryptocurrency token is less than a week old, but its price is certainly headed in a promising direction. The token eForce, which goes by the W-O-Z-X symbol hit a high of 277 on exchange HBTC, where it exclusive, exclusively launched on December 3rd. Yesterday, it lounged as low as $1.32. Its current price is $2.47. eForce is a blockchain-based project co-funded by Waz that allows people to invest in energy-efficient projects by acquiring tokenized future savings. It costs money to make buildings or processes more energy efficient. By purchasing tokens, Woz X buyers are essentially indirecting investing in such project projects. Contributors are rewarded in the form of energy savings in the form of a token, which they can do with as they please. The token is only available on Singapore-based HBTC. Not a surprise, guys, right? Singapore is one of those countries that is very pro-crypto, uh, very open. You can find most things on Singapore-based exchanges before they ever hit something like a U.S.-based exchange. Uh, and even then paired with just the Tether stablecoin, so it's not available to U.S. investors yet. The token is set to hit BitThumb Global this month. Eforce boasted on Friday that WOZX had a 950 million market cap within minutes of its HBTC listing. So yeah, that is pretty crazy, guys, right? 50 million away from a $1 billion market cap. I'm curious to know, let me know in the comments if this is a project that you guys are looking to scoop up, or is this your first time hearing about it? Uh, and does Steve Wozniak being on the team, does that have any type of impact in your decision of whether or not to invest in it? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And we also have VeChain. VeChain becomes founding member of the Blockchain for Trade and Connectivity Network. So, Enterprise Singapore and the Singapore University of Social Sciences, now notice Singapore again, announced the launch of the Blockchain for Trade and Connectivity Network on the first day of Singapore Week for Innovation and Technology. The founding members include Global E-Trade Services, China's Blockchain-Based Service Network, and VeChain. So, as we know, VeChain is working deeply with China, right? Aside from Walmart China, they do are they are in talks with the Chinese government. The letter of intent was scanned and uploaded as a document, symbolically on the VeChain Thor blockchain to demonstrate the immutability and transparency of the blockchain. The initiative aims to increase and promote interoperability between the blockchain technology, Internet of Val Internet of Things, sorry, Internet of Things and companies worldwide. The BTC network, now keep in mind when we're saying BTC network, we're not talking about the Bitcoin network, we're talking about the blockchain trade and connectivity. So the BTC network allows for innovation and test betting of blockchain solutions with multi-model global supply chain companies. 
digital trading platforms and technology specialists. It will focus on enhancing interoperability between blockchains by integrating mesh networks to streamline connectivity between existing systems or platforms. Blockchain interoperability platforms such as the BSN can interconnect between these various platforms and provide the ability to connect opportunities together such that these platforms can achieve critical mass. All right, these platforms can achieve critical mass. It's pretty bullish talking, right? The BTC network will be integrated into the GETS trading network supported by Singapore. This network has a massive reach in Asia and has a blockchain document verification function. Furthermore, GETS is connected to the Commodities Intelligence Center, a physical commodity trading platform. In this respect, the six founding parties of the BTC network argue that the pandemic has already highlighted existing bottlenecks in digitization and acts as a catalyst for current development projects. Progress. Always remember, guys, that the pandemic is the catalyst that is speeding all of this up, right? Whether it's the catalyst or the excuse, whatever it is, uh, we can't deny the fact that almost everything we are seeing uh, being done so quickly is a result of this, right? It, it's, it's basically brought opportunity, right? If that makes sense. VeChain opens up new partnerships worldwide. Most recently, VeChain entered into a cooperation with No Seafood to serve a 102 billion USD target market. Industry insiders also confirmed that the VeChain toolchain is much easier to integrate into existing business processes, such as the competing food system trust from market leader IBM. Okay, so IBM, right? Their business processes is harder to integrate than VeChain's. VeChain is a more seamless process, so VeChain's still winning. In addition, VeChain also competes with well-known industry giants such as Google and Microsoft. VeChain's traceability solutions can be used in a wide range of industries, such as the aforementioned seafood, cannabis, fashion, logistics, and insurance. It's crazy, guys. A startup like VeChain is, is literally uh, competing with Google, competing with Microsoft, uh, has better products than IBM. They are winning. It is it is great to see an innovator like VeChain. I know a lot of you guys are holding VeChain. We did a VeChain video a couple days ago. We, we went to more in depth on this partnership we mentioned here. Uh, there are no seafood. So if you would like to see that, then you could watch this video right here. It's called Wake Up, Ripple XRP, and VeChain Vet are changing the world. We also had a video we did earlier today. If you didn't see it, I would highly recommend you go and check it out because Theta 3.0 is launching and it also goes over some new staking and burning protocols for T Fuel. So I would definitely check that out. It was uploaded earlier today. It is our most recent video. And also on that video, we covered DeFi coming to Cardano. So definitely go and check both of those videos out. And with that said, that is the video for today. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you drop it a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every single day when I upload. Go over Bitcoin, all coins, and everything going on in the crypto space. And with that said, I'll see you all on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.